And now I think it's time to move over to the different types of papers that these pure mistable papers that Tattered Angels has on the store. Um, let's start with this one. I'm just going to turn it around and keep that sticker there to remind me of what kind of paper we have been using. And um, I think we're just going to take one color or we make like squares and use those. So maybe we can just start by one corner to see how that paper looks like when it's misted. And I'm going to give it a good mist to really bring that pattern out. And that would be the green area. And then let's go with, in with the icicle blue. Actually, it's more purple, actually. But it's a beautiful color. When it dries, it's more blue. So you can, I think you can see some patterns coming through there. And then let's take the gold. Let's go to this area here. I can see the shimmer gathering on the top of the paper already so that's going to be beautiful and then do the pink corner here and pink is a little bit stubborn I've got these splatters coming through but I think I'm going to leave it because it will be interesting to see how, how that dries out and then you just try it give it some heat Let's try and give it a quick heat because since it's so thin I've got something coming through from the back side. Maybe a previous color I have been using. Maybe it was not quite dry yet, the misting box. So, But this is just to show you how this paper looks like when it's misted. So. I can use that for something. I don't mind that at all. What I what I see happening is it's blending really nicely. So you can see here there's there are no borders, no like the area is is just a perfect blend between the pink and the gold. It's beautiful. That's a beautiful paper. And it's really thin, so I think this would be nice for flowers for if you die cut this. You could make really nice flowers from it, for example. So this is how the paper looks like when it's misted. Can you see that china? I hope you can. And the blue is really beautiful. So there, there you can see some shine. So that would be the misted crepe paper. And then let's move to the next one, but I'm going to make some preparations first, because I think that this is a little bit too wet, just in case, because I want pure colors and no stains. So this one would be the pattern leather in white, which is a shiny, glossy type of paper. So I'm really excited to see what happens with this one. I can shake a little bit and add some. Oh, that's interesting. You get a totally smooth area, so you have to just mist through the complete paper and then you get this gorgeous shine. This is the perfect paper for this. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. Look at that. It's like it's like bubbling that all that shine is in there. Let me try and catch it. Go back there. I want you have to have some more area to live at. And then let's add some gold. Obviously, because this is the lighter tone, you're not going to see that much of it, but when it's dry, you will see the, the gorgeous shine again. So, I think this is one of my favorites so far. Something's wrong with this pink 
color it doesn't it just comes like a rainfall out of the bottle and then just give it a little dry go away go away go away stay there I don't want you to come over to the golden area at all you can move the color around a little bit with the heat gun that's a nice thing and it gets such an amazing shine wow this is really gorgeous go away didn't you hear me the first time that's better stay there okay look at that shine coming through absolutely gorgeous and since the paper is glossy I have a feeling that the shimmer is staying on top so it's not soaking into the paper like on the previous one really nice effects and it's totally a different type of results because you get all these there's this silvery shimmer and it's gathering and it's building like a pattern into the paper wow so this is a one paper that we should actually put on our favorite top list to use for if you want something really shiny you should use this paper it's perfect okay so now it ju just needs to dry and I could add actually add some drips there and there's a little bit gold going on in there so you have all these different variations of, of the color and it's 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 really stands out from this paper a totally different way than from the other one so different results gorgeous just put that aside leave it to dry and I'll show it to you when it's a little bit dry up and can you see that shine there just look at that it's gorgeous and over here look how shiny that is all that beautiful glitter is on top it's really nice And what we have here next is the satin paper, which is shiny on its own. So this will be interesting. Let's again, let's start with gold. This time, just add a little, little bit of gold there. I don't think this paper needs that much color, because it's already shiny. So you just add a shade, like here. Then go over with the green one here, and then the pink one. We are not friends. Always wanting to add these splatters there, and that's the only color. That's I don't think it's the color. I think it's the bottle, just a stubborn one. Okay, so let's heat it a little bit to see what happens. And as you can see, the fingers start to get some color into them. So by the end of this video, I will be green, blue and pink and have a golden shimmer everywhere. But by tomorrow, it will be all gone. So nothing to worry. If you don't like to get your fingers dirty, you can always use gloves, rubber gloves, thin ones. If you can work with those, that is totally fine. I'm, I'm not a fan of those, so that's why I always have to get my fingers dirty. And this creates, again, a totally different look because it has these little dots in there. I think that's the paper. It's reacting to the, to the shimmer and to the color in that way. But see how beautiful it is? It looks like um, it's weathered almost, has this effect of 
a weathered surface or a sanded surface maybe maybe a little bit into that direction yeah, it's pretty it's really pretty oh and wow it's shiny there's a lot of shine going on there so here on the blue ones you can see that it's like somebody went over this with a scraper or a sanding block that's how it looks it reminds me of something like that but it sure is pretty So my next paper is called Tweed and it has a different feel to it immediately. So this is going to, I think this is going to soak the paper more, uh, soak the color more. And I'm just, you might need a little bit more spraying for this paper. Um, let's go with the green. And there's a pattern coming through. Oh, I like this one. Love it. Look at that. It's like... It's a, it's a tone in tone stamped background immediately if you put that spray there. So that would be the blue. And it soaks right into the paper so you don't get these splotches and splatters and driplets, drip, uh, sorry, <laughs> drippings into that paper at all. Okay, we're getting, we're getting there with the pink one. We're, get, we're com becoming friends. And the gold. That's it. That was easy to do. You get this. On the golden one you can still see the patterns in there but not as much as the darker colors so you might want to, if you want to show the paper structure you might want to take darker colors for this type of paper. Whatever you want to create with this so depending on you. And I'm not going to heat this that much because there are no drippings anywhere. I, I'm just going to leave it to dry. Just a little close up on the... You still have shine and shimmer there but it's more... It's not that, that bold. And what I like a lot is this pattern here. Because it's, it looks really like it's stamped in two layers. First mist it and then a same color stamp image added to the paper. Really lovely. And this one is the Swede. And it's, it's it feels like a little bit like fabric, so it's going to be again a color a uh, paper that soaks the color I'm supposing and let's add a little bit more because I want to see how that reacts let's get really splatters in there too and then let's do the blue one and some green And you can color bigger areas if you move the bottle like I did here. Moving from left to right or right to left, whatever you prefer. That's it. And it's soaking in again, but not as fast as on the previous paper. But what I like a lot is... You get an even result, really, really even, even though you have, okay here maybe not, but there everything just blended in really nicely. The pink splotches will stay there, they will soak into the paper and you will have these occasional spots of shine and, and uh, kind of like a water splot, a splat effect on the paper, but that's okay. like this area here. And the fun thing is that these big splotches resisted the other color and it went all the way around but 
didn't affect the splot itself. That's funny. So these are the things you discover when you play with your mists. These are mainly, mostly accidental discoveries and that's the fun part. You just need to play, you just need to keep experimenting and trying and then you figure something out, something cool that you can use on your next project. Okay, this is the Swede. There's a lot of shine there too, but it's, it's more subtle, not so bold. But it's a pretty paper, it feels like fabric a little bit. Okay, so this was that paper. And I've got four more to go. This one is the textured vinyl white. And this has a strong pattern. And it's a little bit glossy. So, oh, and can you see this areas where the color has set in on the paper towel? I'm going to keep these because these are going to be pretty on a project. Nothing goes to waste here. And then let's start with the green one this time. You get a really nice pattern. Shows up immediately. And the blue one. And the gold. Mm. And some pink. That's it. I could pick up the color to show you what happens. Just maybe take one area with a paper towel to show you if you pick up the color, what's the difference. So you get that immediately. Hmm. I think I'm going to still let it dry on its own. I mean you would get an even coverage and a nice color tone and everything but I think it will be more interesting to see how this dries out and what kind of patterns and things it just creates on its own. Let the color work the paper. And there's a lot of shine, golden shine. Wow, that's pretty. That's really pretty. And the blend is really nice here too. I think that's, that's also nice, but it's a little bit dull. But assuming you want a result like that, like an even coverage and the pattern, show, pattern of the paper showing without all this reactions on the paper, then you would need to use the paper towel first. So it's depending on what kind of result you aim for. You either take the paper towel and pick up some of the color of the paper, or you just let it dry as it is to, react, to create these fun details to the paper. Because I think it's, it's more fun to see what happens on a paper when the color just gets, to, gets its freedom to react with the paper. But then again, if you want an um, even card background, for example, then you might want to go for that. That's totally understandable. I like that one. Okay, so let's take a look at this. There's still, still one drop. I'm going to let that dry. I hope you can see these gorgeous golden details here. And that's the green one and the blue. This was the towel, paper towel area. You can see the difference here. So if you let it air dry, that would be the result. And there's still shimmer in there on this part too but not as much as here because obviously you pick something up with the paper towel and this is really fun this it looks like the space or the, the I don't know 
somehow reminds me of a fall sky coloring and wait until these dry they will be really nice with a lot of shine in them that's a nice paper really nice and if I tilt it you can see all that shine look at that beautiful And my third to last paper is called Leather and this also has a little bit like a glossy feel to the paper. It's very smooth. So let's go over with gold. And I'm just, this time I'm just going to do some random coloring. Not going like on separating this on four pieces. Because I want to use this maybe as a layout background. So just figuring out the color scheme here with my colors that I chose to use for these videos. And then let's add just a little bit pink over here. Okay, and I think I just sprayed myself so that's why you should always have something your area protected and always look what before you spray where this nozzle is pointing towards because you don't want to have that all that color like on your face or on your glasses or on your camera or wherever believe me that happens so fast okay so let's dry this a little bit And this paper has like glitter areas, so it, they gather together, it, they react differently on the surface of this paper. You get a totally different surface look from this paper. That's probably the purpose of, of Swede, but it looks really nice. Oh well, if you want to go there, then go on. Oh, and then maybe just just a few more. No, just one. Okay. Almost dry here. And I like this part when where the blue and the green mixes together it creates a beautiful own color tone. It's like uh, I don't know, the sea reminds me of the Caribbean somehow. Beautiful color. And that one stubborn sp splatter won't dry. <laughs> Come on. Oh well, just leave it like it is. Okay, so this would be sweet. And you can see especially the golden tone. You have all these spots and areas of shiny glimmer everywhere. It's really beautiful. Here you can see it really well. Can you see that? And then moving over to the green the same thing happens looks really nice and then the blue is just a big splot of shine there beautiful and if I turn it a little bit let's see where you can see that see that surface there and the pink one also has some really nice shine to it so that was sweet And then I have one more paper left. Oh, sorry, two. 
Uh, this one is the really thin one, so I hope I have enough coverage here. I'm going to add one more paper towel piece because that area is really wet there to protect the paper because the color is going to soak right through. And then we'll go start with the pink one on the upper corner. Let's add a little bit more pink to this one. Then go over here with the green one. And this is a different type. See how fun that looks like. I hope it dries like that. And then... So what I expected would happen is that the color would soak into the paper, but it didn't. It builds, builds these patterns on top of the paper and like pearls. And that's a funny effect. I like this paper a lot. Let's add, let's mix some colors. Let's put, let's be wild, put some gold into the pink there. And now, I'm really hoping it dries like this. Because that would be really a fun effect to have on the paper. Mm, looking good so far. Yes, okay, this is one faith paper too. You get gorgeous effects. Really beautiful. Wait till you see a close up. I can see it happening here already. So I didn't expect this paper to be so much fun, but it is really, really so much fun. So gorgeous effects. Who would have thought? See what happens, you just need to try, you just need to give them a testing. Get one paper each and try them out and see what type of papers you like using because I'm, sh I'm pretty sure I'm going to order quite a lot of this paper from the store after this, <laughs> finishing these videos. That's really a nice detail. It creates Wow, I hope you can see that already. It actually stays as it is. It just dries on spot. Will take a little bit longer though. But that's a fun effect. I'm just hoping it would dry a little bit faster so that I could show you the results. But I think we just need to be patient. I'm going to stop the video for a while and then I'm coming back when it's done. So I'm back. Uh, it took a uh, good two minutes to dry that paper. Um, but here, can you see that? Isn't that just gorgeous? That looks like, it looks like uh, rain fell over there. It's like, I just really, really like this pattern on this paper. And look at the blue one. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful. Really beautiful. And the gold is just a slight shine and a tad of color in there. But the green and the pink, wow, just beautiful. And the big splat splat splatters, where are they? Here. They look nice too. Oh, there's a storm coming. Oh, how nice. Okay, that so that was the um, sheer paper. Really thin one. Can you hear how it sounds? So it's a different type of, of paper. But I really like the, the deta details. And I just wanted to show you what happens to the paper towel when it gets thin layers of color repeatedly on it. So the gold has turned mixed with red and different shades and it's like a bronze now. And it's really shiny. And look at that. That's pretty. I'm going to save these pieces because this would be really nice on, on 
ATCs and art channel pages, whatever. So let's turn them around and do the last piece of paper, which is the Pucle White. Buckle, Pucle, I don't know, sorry, it's not my language. And let's start with pink. And since it got, gets all these platters all the time, the result is different than the green one. Totally different. But like I said before, it's not the color itself, it's the bottle it has. I don't know, doesn't want to cooperate with me because the other ones are working really nicely. And let's blend some. Let's go in there and blend some gold in there. Let's see what happens here. Let's play a little. And then dry. So now I've got golden dots here and there coming through the blue areas. That'll be interesting. And this paper soaks the color really well, so it goes deep into the paper immediately. Even the color splatters seem to disappear. They are just bigger concentrations of color, but it will be interesting to see how much of them will be left when the paper is dry. Obviously here this is going to stay. And then, of course, what we didn't do with these papers, I just misted them. I didn't do anything else on them. I didn't pre-spray them with water or use a pencil on them, because if you do that, they will again react totally differently. So depending on what type of project you're creating, what tools you're working with, keep in mind that the papers will again deliver you different results with these glimmer mists, because if you pre-mist it like a watercolor paper and then you go over with you take the color with the paintbrush and apply it there then you get a totally different result for sure I'm just misting and seeing the basic thing what happens with a simple spray and how the paper reacts to that so anything else other results would be would need to be tested again but that might be a next video or so. Okay, so sweet looks like this. So it's, it's a really nice blend, even coverage. Not that many splatters in there at all. Just a little bit. Yeah, and the pink one because I just cannot work with that pink bottle for some reason. There's just so much coming out at once, I can't regulate it, but that's, that's something I have to figure out with that bottle. But that gold that goes into those other colors there looks really nice too. So that would be the last paper. And next I think I'm going to just show you how to color different objects, different types of papers. like the doilies and the alphas and that will be the next video but this was just to show you the four colors sprayed on these papers and what the results are. Thanks for watching.